For the winner, by unanimous decision, Anderson the Spider Silva! You never knew any of this about Anderson Silva. Anderson the Spider Silva is undoubtedly one of the best UFC fighters to ever grace the octagon. Let's not dally around and get straight into the known as Anderson Silva. Number 10, from burgers to fighters. There's no doubt that Anderson the Spider Silva has come a long way from his humble beginnings. For a man so humble and universally liked, it can only make one wonder about all his experiences. Don't worry, we're here to shed some light for you. Before signing up with the UFC, or even beginning his MMA career for that matter, Anderson Silva used to work at a local McDonald's to support himself through poverty. He used to reside in Sao Paulo with his uncle and aunt, and was quite good at his job. Well, if you consider his efficiency, not much has changed with the spider over the years. He's as good at frying burgers as he is at frying his competitors. While working at McDonald's, he decided to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu whenever he got the time. This would become his passion, and we all know what happened afterward, don't we? Number 9. He loves Spider-Man Have you seen Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse with Miles Morales. Wow, yet. I watch it. I love it. Good, right? I, I love it. I love it, man. We mean, it isn't exactly a surprise for a man known as the Spider, or the less commonly known Dancing Spider. His regarding of Spider-Man as one of his favorite heroes is certainly an expected, yet pleasant surprise. Of course, we fans can certainly draw parallels to the comic book character from Anderson's unique style of fighting. Silva states that he relates to the story of a young hero who has to overcome the odds against impossible to fight against characters. He relates the struggles of Spider-Man to those of his own early on in his life. Well, all we can say is us too, Anderson. Us too. Number 8. He made the UFC wait quite some time. Every mixed martial artist dreams of making it to the big stage, that is, the UFC. Well, Anderson Silva was no different. After gaining a stellar 7-1 record and defeating the then undefeated Hayato Sakurai, Anderson quickly caught the eyes of the UFC, who offered to sign him up. During his time at Shudo, he won the middleweight title, which made UFC even more eager to recruit the Spider. Unfortunately, they'd have to wait another five years after their initial offer of signing Anderson Silva up. The organization made the initial offer to Silva in 2001. However, Anderson Silva would enter the octagon in 2006. This delay wasn't because Silva was unwilling. Rather, he had signed a contract with Shudo that would last until 2006. The UFC didn't pressure Silva and chose to wait until he could successfully fulfill the terms of his agreement. Anderson Silva led an illustrious fighting career at the UFC as one of the all-time greats. How do you think his legacy would have been affected had he signed earlier? Let us know, but don't go off just yet. There's a lot more to come. Number seven, his boxing career. Anderson was always known as one of the... He's not going to be able to fight from this disc. Too big obsession, if you will. And no, we do not mean his fight against Jake Paul. While that is technically a boxing match, we couldn't call it a career based on a single match now, would we? You might not know, but Anderson Silva actually has some legitimate boxing fights under his belt. While he didn't fare as well as he might have expected in his boxing debut, Anderson did rack up some wins in 2021 against the likes of Tito Ortiz and Julio Chavez Jr. He seems to have transitioned over successfully at this point and looks to be as comfortable with boxing as he was at MMA during his years at the UFC. While 2022 hasn't fared well for the former MMA turned boxer, we'll continue to watch Anderson's future ventures with as much interest as we did in the past. Number 6. Steven Seagal and the front kick He learned that front kick to the face from you. Right. Where'd you teach that? Where'd you learn that? Where did I learn it? Well, I learned it, you know... 
you know, sort of a, a variation of that in Japan probably 30, 40 years ago. There's just something about how Anderson Silva fights that makes him different from the others. We don't know about you, but we remember feeling entranced by the man every time he entered the octagon on fight night. Anyway, we got sidetracked for a minute. The most notable move Anderson Silva liked to pull off was his front kick. Now, when it comes to MMA, the front kick wasn't exactly popular. It was abandoned for the most part and considered a part of a traditional approach to martial arts. This all changed with Steven Seagal. Now, don't start searching up when Steven Seagal started MMA just yet. We meant that he taught the front kick to the two people who could pull the move off effortlessly, namely Lyoto Machida and Anderson Silva. After his fight against Vitor Belfort at UFC 126, Silva revealed that Steven Seagal had taught him how to perfect his front kick. That, coupled with his daily training, made the move truly dangerous. Number five, his sponsors. Boxing is traditional sport and a lot of people working hard and die for this sport. Now, what's so surprising about his sponsors for them to make it to this list, you ask? Well, you shouldn't judge the UFC back in Silva's prime to the UFC of today. Back when Silva was knocking fighters out left and right, major sponsors within the UFC were very hard to come by, even for dominant champions. Anderson Silva, however, was the odd one out of the lot. In fact, many argue Silva was the catalyst that prompted major companies to step into the organization and offer sponsorship to the fighters. Anderson Silva was very popular back in his prime, which led him to be sponsored by business giants such as Nike and Burger King. Interestingly, his close relationship with Cristiano Ronaldo, the soccer superstar, has also led him to land a major sponsorship at Nine, a major sports marketing team. Number four, BJ Penn. Ready? One, two, three, you're the best. No, 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 no
Many people were surprised when Silva left the team to join a rival academy known as the Nogueira brothers. In 2012, Anderson came clean in the biography of his experience and memories at the Shoot Boxing Academy. Number one, his acting career. Nowadays, seeing a UFC fighter in a movie or two isn't a surprise. But back when Anderson Silva was still rolling in his prime, there weren't many movies willing to offer UFC fighters a role, no matter how big or small. Many franchises, however, had to reconsider when Anderson Silva's popularity came into play. You can imagine the surprise we fans felt when we turned on the big screen to see Silva performing his heart and soul out. He has made multiple appearances in movies such as Never Surrender, Tapped Out, and the more recent, The Invincible Dragon. If you're a fan of The Spider, be sure to check these movies out. In some roles, Silva appears to play himself, whereas in others, he prefers to play a given character. Needless to say, he does have an actual talent for acting, and we're happy to see him succeeding and getting new roles. So what do you have to say? Were the facts about Anderson Silva everything you made them out to be, or were you surprised by some of the entries on this list? Whatever the case, like the video and let us know in the comments section below. Also, remember to subscribe, and we'll be seeing you in the next video.